Ranger walks from a back room. Oh, hi. He carries a flat square box, sets it on a desk, and sits down. My name's Ranger AJ, and I'm one of the park rangers here at Agate Fossil Beds National Monument. We are proud to be the home of the James Cook Collection. The James Cook Collection is a collection of Native American artifacts gifted to Rancher James Cook by Chief Red Cloud and others. It's fantastic. It, we have moccasins, shirts, arrows, we have uh, war clubs, we have paintings, we've got dresses, we have all kinds of fabulous stuff in the collection. So we invite you to come on out and check it on out. One of the things that you won't be seeing in the collection is today's hidden story. Back in the 1960s, the Mead family donated what is now called the James Cook Collection to the National Park Service. The National Park Service in 1968 went over to the ranch, which is located about three miles behind me, and they went in the house and started putting tags on everything and anything that they thought would be great for the collection. They then returned later to get those items, and on the day of their return, one of the boys thought it'd be kind of funny and went outside and switched one of the item tags with something that he found out in the yard. He put it upstairs on a dresser, put a little tag on it. Later on in the afternoon, everything was gone out of the house, so wasn't that item. Years later, 2008 to be exact, a number of items were returned to the family pretty much deemed not necessary to be part of the James Cook collection. So the family was very happy to receive some of their items back. One of the items that they got is in this box. He opens the box and reveals a circular textured dark brown item about one foot across and a few inches thick. Later, he reads from a document. Yep, it's what you think it is. It's poop. We refer to it as cow pie. It's about the size of a pie. And, uh, comes from a cow. This is one of the boy, what one of the boys picked up out in the yard and put in the house and up on that dresser. He nods with pursed lips. It stayed in storage for a couple of years after it left the ranch. And according to this paperwork, it was given a catalog number. In fact, actually, I'm going to put this up here. It was given a catalog number. I don't know if you can see it, but it says Cook 1177. So there's your... 1177. White marking on item says 1177. The paperwork that went with this, it was cataloged by a person named V.K. Riley back in September of 1972. According to this paper, this product is in a class of archaeology, it's in a class of historic, and in a class of composite. It is a, an object that is described as excrement bovine. And it even has the catalog number there. It, there's one of them. And here it's this description. It says dried bovine excrement. Material is animal, vegetable, and mineral dehydrated. The description color is buff. The form is irregularly circular grass protruding from surface, top, and bottom, uneven whorls around the top. <clears throat> its condition is good. Good. It's good poop. Its condition is good. It's well preserved, although slight erosion has occurred. And it is 29.2 centimeters diameter by approximately 4.5 centimeters thick. He lowers document and holds up the item in the box again with a wide smile. I can't imagine being the curator that had this come across their desk and they did what they were tasked to do. They cataloged it and it went back into storage. He lowers item, then displays it again later. Years went by, and actually in 1986, it was decided to deaccession some items, and this was one of those items. I have no idea why it took so long to get back to the family, but in 2008, this again is one of the items that went back to the family. One of the family members, not wanting to just throw it back out in the field, went ahead and gave it to us as, I don't know, a memento, <laughs> and it literally sits on top of one of our shelves here in the visitor center as just a reminder that uh, of a hidden story that happened on that day back in 1968. This is a fun little piece. 
And as I said, it is not officially part of the collection. He puts the lid on the box and reveals the handwritten title, The Infamous Cow Pie. But if you can ever come by, you can ask about The Infamous Cow Pie. Thank you. A person writes in a notebook. Title reads, get your writing tools ready. Then, a man wears a black jacket and stands in the snow in front of several painted gray cars arranged purposefully, vertically and horizontally on top of each other. Hello. Uh, we're here to talk about hidden stories and writing poems. Uh, my name is Matt Mason. I'm the Nebraska State Poet. I'm just standing here in some snow uh, thinking about writing funny poems or using absurd stories or, or different things and how we can uh, turn them into poems and maybe say even more than just that that initial bit so you know hopefully you can find something absurd hopefully there's something around you i mean here i'm just standing in snow there's maybe nothing absurd here but what can you do so i'm gonna read you a poem that i wrote because uh when my wife was first pregnant we kept having people coming up to us seeing her pregnant belly and telling us horrible things like see you're never leaving the house again ever and unloading all of uh, the bad things that happened on us who were like expecting a child and hoping people will say good things to us so um i wrote i at first i was kind of angry and confused but i i decided to try to write about it and try to make it funny uh, to start and here's my poem it's called The Baby That Ate Cincinnati. It's one of my favorite poems of mine. Uh, it's the title poem of my second book. I mean, he holds up a book. See? Uh, so, The Baby That Ate Cincinnati. Because the way they say it, they say, baby, like a storm on the way. They say, baby, like that's the cue for the thunderclap to interrupt the wolf's long howl. They say, I got three, and they're the best ever to happen to me as they say baby like you'd say run they shout baby like there are flames licking at the window frames tell us how their lives didn't just change oh no as they say baby like a hyena inside they're coming out fangs ablaze and they say like it's standing right behind us this tornado on the highway Way they give that patronizing nod when we claim we're still gonna go see movies. Oh yeah, we're gonna call our friends, oh sure right, we're gonna go out to see Carhenge in Alliance, Nebraska. As they say, baby, like a bomb in the air. They say, baby, like Artie sitting in the shelter now with just AM radio and a can of pork and beans. You're so lucky. They then weep, sincerely, as I sit on the bed, knees held precious, watching my wife's belly bigger every day, wondering, what's in there? We gonna need a priest, a gun, silver bullets, wire cutters, seven million dollars in non-sequential unmarked bills, Red Cross National Guard, 16 gallons of hydrochloric acid, when all of these warnings, gift wrapped like blessings, when I know ain't gonna be the same around here. But baby, when we say baby, let's say it the same way we say bread, like honey, like beautiful, like dear, like it's true. So with that poem, I just, I wanted to have some funny bits, some things going on, some kind of crazy, weird, absurd things and but what really can you can do with a poem like that though too you get your reader laughing and then you hit him with something like that end i wanted to end it with what i wanted people to actually be doing i wanted kind of a, a, a tender moment for the end um and a lot of poems that do that uh, uh, some of the best political poems i know are ones that make you laugh and then sock you in the stomach um, so maybe you can find something inside the story of, you know, the cow pie with a 
government tag on it. Uh, there's a lot in that story that you could write about. You could write a purely funny poem and that could be wonderful. You could write a poem uh, that's about politics, about treatment of uh, Native American tribes, about Red Cloud, about all these different things. Um, you could really do so much with just that one story. But we've got other stories too, uh, stories in our lives or in our day of absurd or strange or funny things that happen that we could really take on and spend a few minutes writing about and see what happens. So. Well, your assignment is to choose something. Choose a funny story and start writing about it. And maybe take it in a different direction. Maybe just tell the funny story. But see what happens. Tell the, what is your poetic interpretation of the cow pie story? Um, even though a hundred of us might write a poem with that idea, we're gonna come up with a hundred very different poems. So don't worry about that. Just write and have fun. He puts his palm up to wave and grins.